Hello everyone, welcome to the automated script.com, the easiest and the finest way to start your automation testing. To stay up to date with my latest videos and cool automation tips, please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. I am Mahesh and I am Senior Test Automation Architect with 14 plus years of experience in the software test automation. And my goal today is to help you understand and clear the differences of the Selenium web driver and Selenium web driver. Before I go any further, most of the time we think what is manual testing and automation testing. There are some drawbacks in manual testing. I'll cover that in another video where I compare manual testing and why automation testing. But for automation testing, Selenium was founded as an automation testing framework or a tool to overcome the drawbacks or the limitation of manual testing. So let's understand the challenges of manual testing. Take for example, any e-commerce company, be it Amazon or eBay or Best Buy or Flipkart or Alibaba. They rely on the customer traffic on their web applications, websites and the traffic on their web-based mobile application or their native application. Imagine if something went wrong and like the prices of number of products that been degraded by $10 because of a small bug in their uh, part of somewhere in the code, then what will happen? The huge loss. Another example, if the same bug occurs only on Safari, and if it's common to rely on the manual testing, then this approach doesn't scale when the team is small or when the releases are extremely frequent, like an each festive offers on the multiple browser, we need to test these things. So stop thinking and the selenium that comes into the picture. Now what is selenium? Selenium is an open source uh, automated testing framework used to validate web application across different browsers and platforms. A browser automation tool does exactly what you would expect. Automate the control of a browser so that repetitive tasks can be automated. It sounds like a simple problem to solve, but as we will see, a lot has to happen behind the scenes to make it work, you can use multiple programming language like Java, C Sharp, Python, etc. to create a Selenium test codes. Now going in more detail, so let's say Jason again started the Selenium projects in 2004 while working at the ThoughtWorks on their in-house time and expenses systems, which made extensive use of JavaScript. Although Internet Explorer was the dominant browser at that time, ThoughtWorks used a number of alternative browsers and open source testing tool at the time where either focus on a single browser, typically I, or where simultaneous uh, or simultaneous uh, of a browser like HTTP unit. The cost of license for a commercial tool would have exhausted the limited budget for a small in-house coder, so they weren't even considered as a viable testing choices. Fortunately, all the browsers being tested supported JavaScript. So it made sense to Jason and to team that they were working with to write the testing tool on those languages, which could be used to verify the behavior of the application. They used the table-based syntax and that was placed over the raw JavaScript. And this allowed tests to be written by people with limited programming experience as well. And it used a keyword-driven approach in HTML files. This tool originally called as a Selenium, but later referred to the Selenium code and was released under Apache uh, 2 license in 2004. Now everyone uh, make sure, I mean, how, how this name Selenium for this framework is kept. So while Selenium was under development, another automated testing framework or tool was popular during Selenium development, QTP, and it was by a com uh, company called Mercury Interactive. Since most of you know mercury is a poison and selenium is uh, a well-known antidote for mercury poisoning. That's why Jason suggested that name and his teammates uh, took it and so that uh, is how we got all this framework up to the present. Basically, uh, selenium holds uh, four major components. Selenium ID for record and play, selenium RC that is Selenium Remote Control, where a server 
that will act as an HTTP proxy to trick the browser into believing that Selenium Core and the web application being tested come from the same domain. Then Selenium Greed execution uh, of the automated scripts on the different machines simultaneously it supports the simultaneous execution of the same automated scripts and the web driver. It was the first uh, cross-platform testing framework that could control the browser from the different OS level. Okay, so let's jump into the Selenium ID now. Now, when we say Selenium ID, that is Selenium Integrated Development Environment, that is ID, is the simplest framework in the Selenium suite and is the easiest one to learn. And it is Firefox plugin that you can install that easily as you can with another plugin. The advantages of Selenium ID is that a test recorded via plugin can be exported in different programming languages like Java, Ruby, C Sharp, Python, and etc. But the associated there are some of the shortcomings also with the ID, like plugin only available for Mozilla Firefox that time and not for other browsers. And it is not possible to test dynamic web application, only simple test can be recorded. Test cases cannot be scripted using the programming logic as well. And you can just copy those uh, uh, programming scripts and you can plug with your uh, any development ID. And it does not support any data driven testing that time. Now, that's why I mean, ID is only called as a plug, uh, plug and a play. The table format, if you can see on my slide, that type, name, search, edit, and automated scripts, the table format for Selenium is structured similarly to the action feature. Each row of the table is split into three columns. The first column gives the name of the command to execute. The second column typically contains an element identifier that is unique identifier on the web application. And the third column contains an op uh, optional value. For example, this is how to type the string automated script into an element identified with the name subject it talks. Because Selenium uh, was written in pure JavaScript, its initial design required developers to post a core and their test on the same server as the application. And that is to use the under uh, AUT, I mean application under test. And in order to avoid failing fall of the browser security policies. To resolve this and other issues on HTTP proxy was written so that every HTTP request could be intercepted by Selenium. Using this proxy made it possible to side by side or sidestep many of the constraints of the same host origin policy, where a browser won't allow JavaScript to make calls to anything other than the server from which the current page has been served. Allowing the first witness to be mitigated, the design opened up the possibility of writing Selenium bindings in multiple languages, and they just needed to be able to send HTTP requests to a particular URL. The wire format was closely modeled on the table-based syntax of Selenium Core and it along with the table-based syntax, which I am currently showing you, become is known as a Selenium as a language. Okay, now what we can see is uh, the Selenium RC. A Selenium RC is nothing but a remote control. A Selenium remote control. So I can show you the Selenium remote control architecture. So if you can see, there is a remote control server. There are some different language bindings and every con remote control working on one of the Selenium core. So Selenium RC was the flagship testing framework of the whole Selenium project for a long time. And this is the first automated web testing tool that allowed users to use the programming language they prefer. The languages they supported like uh, the Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, Perl, and PHP. RC overcame uh, the problem by involving an HTTP proxy server, which I, I just uh, explained in my previous slide, to trick the browser into a believing that Selenium Core and the web application being tested come from some same domain. Thus making uh, that RC has a two component tool. One is Selenium RC server, another one is Selenium RC client. So client is a library containing your programming language code, which I have shown you the bandings. RC server communicates using simple HTTP gate and POST request. The drawback uh, with the RC is that every communication with the RC server is time consuming and hence RC is very slow. So if you can, if you know the currently Selenium uh, WebDriver 3 onwards, RC has been deprecated and moved to the legacy package. You can however download and work with RC, but unfortunately you cannot avail the support for it. Now let's move to the Selenium grid. 
So this is the Selenium grid architecture where I mentioned that, that is a hub and all below are the nodes. So uh, I have uh, one single hub that is uh, communicated over multiple nodes like node 1 is Mac, node 2 is Windows, node 3 is Android and node 4 is Linux machine. So Selenium grid is a tool used together with Selenium RC to run parallel tests across different machines and uh, different browsers. So it will help you at the same time. And the parallel execution means running multiple tests at once. It has a different features like it enables simultaneous running of tests in multiple browsers and environments. It saves lot of your time because it executes at the same time on a multiple machines. So your test uh, execution time is divided into the number of machines uh, you, uh, you uh, share with your hub. Utilizes the hub and node concept and that's why I mean uh, we are at the parallel execution is possible with this. And the parallel execution is achieved with the help of hub node architecture which I am showing you. One machine will assume the role of hub and the other will be in the nodes. Hub controls the test scripts running on a various browsers inside various operating system. Test scripts being executed on different nodes can be written in a different programming languages. Grid is still in use with works with the web driver as well as RC board. Now, the fourth and the important uh, uh, component of uh, Selenium that is your web driver. So, while Selenium was being developed, another browser automation framework was brewing in the ThoughtWorks like a web driver. The initial call for this was released in early in 2007. WebDriver was derived from work on the projects which wanted to isolate their end-to-end -end test from the underlying test tool. The WebDriver proves itself to be a better than both Selenium ID and Selenium RC in many aspects. It implements a more modern and stable approach in the automating the browser actions. WebDriver, unlike Selenium RC, does not rely on JavaScript for automation. It controls the browser by directly communicating with it. When WebDriver was released, there were significant differences between it and Selenium RC. Though they sat in the same software niche of an API for browser automation, the most obvious differences to the user was the Selenium RC had a dictionary-based API and uh, the methods exposed to a single class. Whereas WebDriver, uh, they had more object-oriented API. In addition, WebDriver only support Java, it was developed, and whereas Selenium RC offered support for wide range of languages. There were also strong technical differences. Selenium Core uh, was essentially a JavaScript application running inside the browser security sandbox, Web, whereas WebDriver attempted to bind natively to the browser and sidestepping the browser security model at the cost of significant increased development effort for the framework itself. So WebDriver, the newer breakthrough that allows your test scripts to communicate directly to the browser, thereby controlling it from the OS level. So if you know Selenium, RC and WebDriver are the two different things here. Selenium RC works on the JavaScript, whereas uh, the WebDriver communicates directly. Uh, we do have uh, normally use a sel Selenium terminologies like Selenium Core. Selenium Core is the heart of the original Selenium implementation and is the set of JavaScript scripts that control the browsers. This is sometimes referred to as Selenium and sometimes as a core. Now, second one is your Selenium RC. That was the name given to the language binding for Selenium Core and is commonly and confusingly referred to as a Selenium or RC. It has now been replaced by Selenium WebDriver, where RC's API is referred to as Selenium 1.0 API. So, uh, see, uh, then Selenium RC and a WebDriver. These two uh, components are announced in August. 2009 and announced that the two projects would merge and that becomes the newer uh, product that is Selenium WebDriver and that is the result of that. So WebDriver support language bindings for Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby and etc. And it offers support for Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, then uh, a multiple uh, Opera and Android and uh, iPhone browsers. There are sister projects not kept in the same source code repository, but working closely with the main project that provide Perl bindings and implementation for the BlackBerry browser and for headless WebKit useful for those times where the tests need to run on the continuous integration server without a proper display. 
The original Selenium RC mechanism is still maintained and allows WebDriver to provide support for browsers that would otherwise uh, uh, un unsupported. Selenium WebDriver fits in the same niche as RC did and has subsumed the original 1.0 bindings. It refers to both the language bindings and the implementation of the individual browser controlling code. This is commonly referred to as just Selenium WebDriver or sometimes as Selenium 2. So very much clear, Selenium WebDriver and Selenium WebDriver are three different terms and implementation. Today we saw Selenium and its tool suits. Selenium celebrated a market leader in the test automation because it's uh, benefit another like cost because Selenium is completely free, flexibility like because of number of programming language, browsers and platform it can support and it supports the parallel testing. In the next tutorial, I am going to explain what is Selenium WebDriver more in detail and its architecture. So as of now, I have not covered my Selenium WebDriver which is a plan in the next tutorial. Meanwhile, if you have any question or you want me to cover any particular topic, then please post your comment on this video. I'll try to cover that in my next video. Thank you for watching this video and please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Thank you.